Beck fans on the one-timer. And then Beck gets hammered to the ice, and he is down. And Jack Beck on the ice as we have a look. And there you oh, see it. Ouch. That was a uh, headshot. That is late. That is a late headshot. I, I only saw it live, so it's hard for me to, to, to evaluate that, and, and I'm sure that's something the league will get involved in, but uh, there was no, no call on the ice, and uh, you know, I, the officiating I thought was fair tonight, so I did a good job. Extends up his upper body and, and catches back. Difficult first period, given some circumstances that happened, but most importantly, we started to hunt. We started to be physical. Um, I think they poked the bear there in the first period uh, and uh, woke the boys up. There, oh. Behind the net. Evans. That is a five-minute major cross-check. Evans just cross-checked one of the Guelph players. It's Nemesnikov. And Nemesnikov is checking his facial area. I thought our response over the next, what, five, six minutes was pretty obvious. We yeah. became a very physical team. We started hunting pucks. And I think uh, it shows the love for Becker um, and the resilience of our group. And yeah, they poked the bear. I, I don't know Beck's status, but obviously he doesn't return to the game, so that's not good. I'm assuming the league's going to look at that, and I'm assuming there's going to be something tied on to that one. That's, that's an egregious hit, and uh, targeting the best player on the team, 85 points, you know, team leading in points. The pictures, I'm sure, if you want them, they're available for you, and it's pretty obvious it's directed to the head. Yeah, I do think it could be serious, absolutely. We don't we don't know the situation for Jack, and um, I can almost guarantee you that he's, he probably doesn't play game two, and uh, that's disgusting in my opinion. Oh, no doubt about it, they poked the bear. Yeah, they poked the bear. Walking the line, Bushinger to the side of the net. Nemesnikov goes off the skate. Oh. They score! Jake Carabella bangs it in. Whoa. I like the way we played today. I, yeah. thought, I thought we defended well. I, I thought we were over our outs. I they had to come through five of us all the time. We, you know, For a team that generates the offense and the shots they do, uh, to keep them to 20-plus uh, 20, 20 shots there, um, I didn't think we gave up a lot of great A opportunities. I, I liked yeah, our game defensively. Quickly, comes in front. Here's a chance. They score! I, I, I like the whole 60 minutes. I like the way some of our leadership grabbed the bench uh, and really took over with style of play. That's the cup. Setting front, they score! A shot to the point by Michael Bushinger through a lot of traffic, and the Guelph Storm back in the lead. It's 2 1. Sends it in. McConnell Barker racing after it. It comes in front, they score! It's a momentum swing. I mean, one was unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, I thought both were kind of unfortunate, but the one hit the wall and. Uh, bad bounce, it ends up in the back of your net, and you just have to find a way to reset and refocus and move on and, and uh, not look back on, on those uh, unfortunate uh, plays. Nice, Mignosa picks it up, gains the Guelph zone. Here's Mignosa going right in on goal, a pass, he scores! The last 40 minutes, obviously, we amped up our game, we make a few adjustments that I think were successful for us. Here, the way the game went, I think, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty darn good effort by our guys. Gets the puck, there's a hit from behind as Grendner. Hammered Virgilio into the boards. No penalty chance, they score! Guelph Storm tie the hockey game at three. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to need to score in the power play. Again, we, we don't generate a ton of offense, you know, five on five. We manage bucks well. We wear teams down. Uh, we rely a lot on our power play, and they, they came up big tonight with two. Storm on a change. Here's Hayes going in on goal. Back and scores! Power play goal, Gavin Hayes. It's 4 3. Suzanne to get those three. two goals back to back, you could just see the bench lift, a little more wind in our sails. Uh, like, oh, yeah, this is working, and this is what we're supposed to do. This is our identity. I uh, really love the way we hunted the puck, and I thought our leadership, the guys who have played in the playoffs, I thought our first 10 minutes was pretty dry. Uh, it looks like Guelph uh, was in playoff mode already, which, which I know they've said as much over their last nine, 10 games. They've been jockeying for position and really, really playing a hard brand of hockey and, and showed in their first 10 minutes. And I thought guys like Bryce, Gav, Frask, um, some guys who have been there before, Kareel, Caden, Gibby, I thought they really led the way. Yeah, credit to our leadership, I thought was fantastic tonight. As the Sioux Greyhounds take game one of the series. I will, we'll go back to the hotel tonight, watch a game, um, you know, uh, and, and see if there's any adjustments that we need to make. You know, usually it's pretty minor, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out here in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Um, I thought our forecheck was, was really average for the first 30 minutes. I thought our exits in the first period were difficult, and I think special teams, right, power play and PK both have to step up to the plate. I thought we had an opportunity to put that game away late, and I thought they generated momentum on their PK, and then obviously they score a couple of goals on their power play. Uh, if we can eliminate that and, and do a better job on special teams, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. 
just gonna score one more goal than them.